everybody, uh, my name is Matt Abbott, I run the spoken word record label Nims and Thugs and I've decided during lockdown to do these weekly Insta sessions where basically I invite some of my favourite poets from around the country to join me for half an hour of relaxed conversation and performance and yeah, it's just really fun, it's really chilled, it's half an hour um, and it saves on train fares and hotel fares and it means I can ask people from all over the country and not have to worry about any of the logistics which is right good and one of the very very few silver linings of this whole situation that we're in. Um, yeah, so up today we've got Emily Harrison. Uh, Emily is a poet and award-winning spoken word artist. Her debut collection, I Can't Sleep Because My Bed Is On Fire, was published by Burning Eye Books in 2016. And I think it was 2016 when Emily won the uh, Saboteur Award for Best Spoken Word Performer as well. I'm not actually sure, but I'm sure she'll correct us on that. Um, but yeah, I've seen Emily perform a few times. I believe I first met her at Timmy Wells' legendary uh, Christmas All Day uh, a couple of years ago at the Betsy Trotwood in Farringdon. Um, and yeah, I've seen Emily do a range of like political events, spoken word events. Yeah, she's top class. So I shall see if she fancies joining. I'm still getting used to this technology shebang. Oh, here we are. Oh, bloody hot today, isn't it? I know it's boring to talk about the weather, but... All right. Oh, hey! How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Bit weird, this, isn't it? I mean, re was I meant to put shoes on? I just... I was like, not, I not really. I put lipstick on, which is nice, but I was like, do I put a shoe on? Do I... Do I bring a gift, I've, Matt? What do I do? I've got, I've got shorts and mis mismatched socks. It doesn't really matter what's happening. Below just... the waist. <laughs> Sorry. That... <laughs> no, I've got right. to run for already. How are you? How are things? Uh, buzzing, thanks. Yeah, just trying to keep busy. Yeah, how about yourself? Yeah, same. Just uh, getting used to this. I guess we, you've had this conversation with probably everybody, and I've had this conversation with everybody. The other day, someone said to me, they were like, "How's life going?" And I'm like, "You don't want to know, and I don't want to tell you." So, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. so there's like a mutual understanding that we're all kind of. Uh, a little bit lost out here but you know <laughs> yeah the novel is gone now isn't it and it's not even proper lockdown it's this halfway house bullshit no like, i i either want all of my liberties taken off me or i want all of them given back i don't like this in between i know you can go bingo but you can't go theater like i mean i love bingo don't get me wrong but i think i'd rather go bingo than theater you can win something with the bingo <laughs> that's true that's true um, I was just chatting before I invited you on. Um, when were you one best local word form? Was that 2016? Oh, it was bloody years ago, and I'm still dining off it, mate. <laughs> there's been there's why not? Been, there's been dozens since. I'm very grateful for winning it, obviously. But yeah, um, yeah, that was a while ago. And um, hello. It's never got. It's never simple. It's never. I bet this hasn't happened before. And as soon as I jump on, <laughs> I, I know it's never it happened before. You? I've got no idea. Oh, because my, oh, well, let, anyways, She's sorry back. about that. If anyone was going to disappear for a while and then come back with a vengeance, it was always going to be me. So don't worry. Yeah. Uh, well, as I was saying, if I freeze up and you're not frozen up, just just, just carry on carry doing on. it. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sorry if it was my fault. I, I don't know. I've, um, I've gone off the Wi-Fi. I don't know whether I'm investing in good enough uh, broadband. You've gone comment, off your Wi-Fi. Comment below if people know a better, what's the best broadband? <laughs> I've gone off my Wi-Fi as well and it started working all right. There we go. Well, that's about. <laughs> Anyways, uh, would you like to read us a poem at, or vignette? Yeah, so I've been working on these little things. Um, hi, is that Maria? It is. Hi, Maria. How's it going, mate? I'm trying not to steal his thunder, babe. I love it. And I'm you not going to <laughs> This is not, it's just like a catch up with you guys. Do you remember that? We had a great chat in the pub that time in, um, where was it? Oh, Hackney. It was in Hackney, wasn't it? Where, oh, it's just good to see you both again. Sorry. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've been writing these little, these, these snapshots um, about some stuff. Obviously being in, being in lockdown um, is, I've had a lot of practice for it because um, I've been in hospital um, which means you can't leave if you want to leave, and um, yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff happens where you feel like there's a lot of restrictions on you. So I've been—it's obviously dragged up a lot of that stuff 
Um, and I've just been thinking about it and, and hopefully writing things that are a little bit more universal for once because people are like, oh yeah, I, it is a bit weird <laughs> to not be able to leave uh, whenever you want and go cinema or pub or what. Yeah. Love that those are my two priorities, cinema, pub. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair enough, why not? So yeah, can I start by reading, uh, reading one of them about of course, yeah, that'd be great. Doors, thanks, mate. Um, all right, I've got it in front of me, like here. So this is because <laughs> I would That's have read fine. it on my phone, but this is my phone. So uh, all right, uh, this is uh, this is called Horizon, uh, and it goes like this: <laughs> You are standing in a glass corridor, which you decide to stare out of for a while. You look down at your hands and they are carrying a carrier bag full of your stuff, sharp things and shoelaces. There was a locked door and then there wasn't a locked door. And now there are keys and credit cards. There are train tickets, drugs and phone in ex-boyfriends. You could go anywhere. Without looking up, you know there are planes. Without seeing it, you know there is the grass that you asked for. You could go anywhere. So you go alone to a Pizza Express opposite Liverpool Street Station. In the toilets, you groan at yourself in the mirror. The woman next to you, washing her hands, says softly to your reflection, no, babe, come on, it's the weekend. When the world ends and begins again, there will always be doughballs. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I'm looking forward to going back to Pizza Express. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Have, have they branched out to Uber Eats? Do they do that sort of thing? Not that I'm trying to promote anyone. Other delivery apps are available. <laughs> I don't know. It's not the same though, is it? It's not the same. No, it's not. You're right. You're totally I mean, right. The Sorry. atmosphere. Yeah. The atmosphere. <laughs> then we're getting a pint and take away pint in. It's like being 14 again, walking around the streets with a pint in your hand. It's not on. It's not on. It's not the same. It's not the same. So yeah, I've been writing these little things um, and I'm kind of, I don't know what they are yet, but hopefully they're coming into something. Cool. Who knows? Do you want another one? Yes, please. About uh, growing up in Swindon. Yes, I, I love Swindon. I bloody mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Swindon. I think Swindon's great. Thank you. I don't need you to say that. And Swindon probably doesn't need you to say that, Matt. But thank you. No, it's in like, it's, I, oh, I, I need to be careful what I'm saying here. But it's a bit like Wakefield in that it's sort of, it's a bit shit. But you sort oh, yeah. of love it. Of course. Like, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I've just been... Uh, been writing about my nan someone told me the other day you're working class if it's a nan if you call your nan your nan anyway who knows so uh yeah this is uh my dad was born on and grew up uh in a council estate called walcott and then he was born in the upstairs bedroom and then my nan lived in that house her entire life um so it's a fond place uh yeah so uh this is called walcott close Nan answers the landline by reciting her own phone number. There is a half-finished 100-piece jigsaw on the dining room table, the edges of the sky complete. On the fridge is a magnet from every county in England. In the kitchen drawers are the tea towels to match. Nan collects, Nan collects porcelain clowns and grandchildren. Cartoon Network is always on the telly. There's a bowl of sweets in the middle of the coffee table, but we're only allowed them if we're offered. Grandad sits in his armchair smoking roll-ups and never smiles. All the men in our family work on factory conveyor belts. When he dies, Dad will sit in his chair whenever we visit. Every now and then we'll have to do a double take. I'm reading The Sun while sat on a garish settee. It is covered with the kind of floral pattern you find growing in charity shops. I pose for a photo to use up the last of the camera roll. Nan tells us about cleaning the classrooms in the big secondary school around the corner and how all the teachers remember her name despite being busy. She tells them her granddaughter will be a teacher one day. I'll remember this when I hold my first paycheck. The dresses behind her are full of knickknacks, which she tells me are not the same as souvenirs. When she dies, we won't know what to do with them. Oh, beautiful. So many great lines in there. Really great. Love that. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Is that a fairly new one, then? Do you say that's one of the ones you've been working on? Yeah, I've been having these, I don't know, we've got, we've got a lot of thinking time, haven't we, as a <laughs> sat yeah. Um And I guess I've been thinking a lot about space and, and what it means to be in a space, what it means to leave a space, what it means to miss a space. 
uh, I'm, I do miss Swindon <laughs> a little bit. Uh, my family is yeah. still there, so who, who would have thought I wanted to jump on a GWR train at, at, the, at the, you know, most convenient, next convenient moment, but... No. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant, though. And, and you've got to go away to be able to write about it sometimes, aren't you? Like, I write about Wakefield more now that I live down here. And I know I'll write about London when I leave. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah, no, right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, the line about t only taking a pose with posing for a photo to get to finish the film and, like, yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, mate. I'm hoping Ooh. to capture, like, uh, capture some time as well, you know. Um, Hopefully, if if Nan was around now, I would definitely convince her not to buy the sun anymore. So, <laughs> but yeah. when I was a kid, I didn't quite understand it. <laughs> no, well, you know, you don't, do you, to be fair? Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I've just been um, writing a bit more about family as well, which um, I've never really done, we've never really done before. It feels a bit exposing, doesn't it, to write about um, those closest to you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you, yeah, definitely, and yeah, because your family's there, in it, and sometimes you need a bit of that. To, yeah, no, it's very complicated, but important, I think. Also, to me, I like I'll happily air all my dirty laundry till the cows come home. Like you know, give me the moolah for that. But when it comes to airing, perhaps what might be considered to be your your family's, you know, intimacies and secrecies, I'm trying to find the balance between that. I think um, they yeah. didn't, they didn't ask for me to do this. <laughs> yeah. So maybe they don't be. Yeah. 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 No, I get you. Yeah. No, oh, fair enough. Um. um cool. Do you want one about my dad? I've... It was Father's Day, wasn't it? Sure. You can be as you can stick to as many themes as you want, or you can just go totally off. It's whatever, you, whatever you want to do. It's for it's for day that we voted leave. It was Father's Day last week. There's all kinds of things you could do. That all of that is oh, very no. emotionally uh, jarring and. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, we need to be reminded of, uh, you know, colossal mistakes that the country's made. I'd say so. A little bit. A little bit. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, so my, uh, yeah, my just, I, I'll just go into it. I, I always do, I always try and over explain and it's like, you've said it in the thing, haven't you? No need to over explain, mate. It's like filling... Um, I, mean, it's, I guess it's my version of being uh, like uh, anxious about small talk, isn't it? <laughs> I do think that preamble is important to some extent because that you know that's when you sort of like connecting with the audience in a different way. But some people definitely over preamble. I've, I've never I've never noticed it when I've been watching you perform. To be fair. Also, how how are we meant to preamble? Like, I'm just in my room with my shoes off, like, <laughs> and you're lovely, but I'm aware we're having a chat. But there's also a couple other people looking, and it's a bit. I know it's I know it's weird. I know. I know. Do, just do do whatever you feel most comfortable with. I just as long as you're comfortable, I'm happy. That's nice. I I appreciate that sentiment. Thank you. Um all right. Well, uh this is this is about my dad then. This is this is called um thank you for your service. It is 5 a.m. and you're listening to a voicemail from your father. He has pocket dialed you from the break room at work. You half expect to hear the machinery he hates so much. Through the phone, you can feel the heat of the place. On his birthday, your father sends one message, the same message every year. You listen out for molten screams. You have a page in his diary from the year you were born. In it, he has his eye on a Yamaha RD350LC. You have no idea what this means, but it sounds expensive. His handwriting is nothing like your mother's. I was tempted, but all the money I've put aside goes to the baby. You listen to your father tell his workmate about how much money he saved. You delete the message before you get to the end, one year closer to retirement. You cannot imagine your father with a hobby. He's measured out his worth in overtime. He's never taken a day off, which you find almost ungodly. On the telly later that night, a man is talking about his recent release from prison. I didn't know how to order, he says. I'm looking at the menu and there's too much there. His voice breaks slightly. He looks down at his hands and mimes holding cutlery. I've been told what to eat for 17 years. The fork was just too heavy. Wow. Cool. Thanks, mate. It's all a bit weird. I like, you say a thing and then you're like, I've said a thing. So thank you for the, 
I'm glad you're here. I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's easy for me. I just get to listen to it, enjoy it, and then say that's great, yeah. Good. Thank you, oh. for Callum, for the thumb up. I appreciate that. And the yeah, you are getting there. coloured hearts. Look, you look coloured hearts going up, so you are getting lots of love. Oh, all I need just is a bit of love. <laughs> silent, and, silent and distant and digital. Exactly. This is the this is the future. This is the this is the world we're walking into now, isn't it? Yeah, we won't have to travel to Croydon together to do a gig to this many people. Um, no. Oh yeah. In fact, I'm trying to. You know, are we gonna are we gonna sneak back in one day to you know some sort of venue where I'm too hot and bothered to make anybody laugh, and then you blow everybody away with your amazing ability to remember everything <laughs> and write lush stuff. <laughs> Those days are gone. Is it going to happen again? Is it? Who knows? No. <laughs> Who knows? No. Who Those knows? Those days are gone. Um, oh, well. I've just got like this little document in front of me and I'm just kind of scrolling through. Is it all right? Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. feel, nobody minds that I'm kind of just, I'm trying not to be so like. No, no. It, I, that's what I'm hoping to create with these. I just want it to be really chilled and relaxed, both for you and for the viewers. Like, it's just a nice thing. Mm -hmm. I like right. that. Thank you for the, yeah, I appreciate the, the, the platform to share some stuff. Um, oh, like, you know, you to do. like you said, when you're on your ones and you're kind of typing all this stuff away and also there's a pandemic going on, um, you do wonder, <laughs> you do wonder for your, uh, for your sanity. Um, yeah, so you yeah. do. Um, I think what I've been trying to do though is try not to lean on being funny all the time. And that you can write about serious stuff and it be and it have some sort of uh, some sort of oomph to it. I'm definitely somebody yeah. who loves a bit of uh, immediate gratification, and you know, a laugh is always something that makes you feel good about yourself. So I'm trying yeah. not to just uh, to to laugh too much at myself to the detriment of, <laughs> of my of my sanity and identity and well being. Is that too much to you. ask? <laughs> I hear you. Takes a long time though. I feel like this has turned into some therapy, um, Matt, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. That's, that's, that's all poetry is. It's fine. All, but all poetry is therapy, but all therapy is definitely not poetry. That's no. <laughs> not but you, you've got, don't, you know, I've got nothing to apologise for. It's great. You just share whatever you want to share, say whatever you want to say. It's Thank all good. Me. I'm going to do another one. Cool. I'm going to go at writing in third person. So here's a third person. If that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank cool. you. This is, uh, this one's called Keep Clear. Three days before the daughter goes back to him, the mother bangs on the door of a hotel room. It's taken her weeks to get here. She pleads with the daughter. She repeats, she repeats the word home through the peephole and silently strokes the paintwork. The daughter opens the door sobbing. Tears drip off the door handle and onto the navy blue carpet. The mother opens her arms. The daughter won't leave and can't leave because the doorway's in flames. I brought you into this world and I'll do anything to keep you in it. The mother knows they don't have long. The mother tells the daughter to grab whatever she can carry. They grab each other. They run past the lift, their feet on the stairs like a house fire. Something is coming for their heels. They run through the lobby and throw themselves into a taxi. Drive, 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 says the mother, her voice the accelerator. In three days, the daughter will accept his proposal. In the back of the taxi, they weep into each other's tired bones. Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is weird for me also knowing what to say. I'll do like... Of course. But yeah, no, I also feel like I want to say to you just... I'm just gonna smash through a couple. Don't feel like you have to do. It's um, when sometimes when you tell somebody good or bad news, and you, you're just like, it doesn't matter how you respond. I'm just gonna say a thing. Sometimes writing serious stuff can feel a bit like that. Like I yeah, it's it's it's, it's difficult. Like, I think I've I've had the same sort of journey as you with that, and it's really difficult. But once you overcome it, it's so important. It's so valuable. Yeah, I think like I said, like if at least if people are laughing, you're kind of like. Oh, I did. I did a good. <laughs> like, yeah. I did a good. Somebody, somebody. You could do two. Sorry, sorry. No, I was going to say about. somebody's. You know, somebody's responded. Um, I guess that's why people like doing a little hmm, or you know, the controversial clicks, perhaps. <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because if you do, say, two poems that are average but funny, and then you do a fucking amazing poem that's not funny at all, you're going to think that that poem's bombed. I and always think that. Yes. I know. But it hasn't. It's just that people are like, w yeah. But then also some people do the mmm to show off that they've got a reference or whatever. Yeah. So it's a minefield. Yeah. I find um, <laughs> can't do Maybe this is that this is quite nice. I mean, obviously, like you said, it's all a little digital heart, people kind of popping on and off. Um yeah. maybe this is the way forward. Um, so they don't have to sit through all of it and then they can uh, <laughs> No, I meant like God, see there we go. Um me You can see people join, you can't see them leave. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what I need in life. Just Yeah. <laughs> nobody nobody uh, visually exiting would be um, would be yeah, I've, I've had people walk out 10 minutes into an hour long show before. It's not a good feeling. No, I mean, but I was, one. one of the greatest things I ever heard was, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, there's an artist, this sounds so wanky. Oh, there's an artist called Joseph Albers who says, calm down, what happens, happens mostly without you. And that has been the most freeing thing anyone could ever have said to me, because I'm so anxious, but it's so, um, it's so self-centered to be, like anxiety, anxiety puts you in the middle of the universe, doesn't it? Like oh, something terrible is going to happen to me today. So it's quite nice to sometimes just think, oh, I'm really not that important. <laughs> in a freeing, nice way. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. That's good. I'm going to use that. Thank you. Um, cool. Should I chuck you? Should I chuck? I got like two more. Is that all right? Should I do two? That's amazing. Yeah. We, we, it's cool if we run over a minute or two, because obviously we had a little glitch to begin with. So it's not fair to whatever you want to read. Yeah. Do you know what? I'll do, I'll do one, then we don't need to chat about it, then I'll do it. The last one is, hope, is maybe the most hopeful thing I've ever read, and then, um, and then we'll chat and say bye. Top banana. Is that all right? Cool. Yeah, of course. To take some sort of, I'm, I need the structure. Um, all right, so what, and then hopefully everyone else is on board, so you guys know before you have your tea, if you have your tea this late. Is this late or early to have tea? Who knows? Anyway. What I'll do is I'll read one, then I'll go straight into the joyful one, and then we'll have some love, and then we'll go. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. All right, we're in. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Margot, brackets, 30-ish. The phone rings in a terrible memory. Your mother sits at her dresser and carefully prods the skin beneath her eyes. She wears a black silk dressing gown, and her hair is whipped up into a towel. She lets out an audible groan. She will only talk to herself at this time in the morning. A phone continues to ring in a terrible memory. You pass it to her, the cord stretched tight between you. The air changes as soon as the receiver reaches her ear. You move closer. The voice screaming on the other end is high pitched. It sounds far off and unreachable. A few words leak out, losing blood, a lot of it. She looks at herself in the mirror without blinking. Your mother has nothing to add to the conversation. She places the phone back onto the receiver, careful as freshly painted nails. She lets the perfume settle. It's your father, she says. Slowly, she begins to put on her lipstick. Here's some joy to end with, she says. <laughs> my version of joy might not be the yeah. version of joy. <laughs> this is called beautiful fucking fairy tale stuff you'll take yourself on a date to bruges you won't watch in bruges before you go you'll spend the day looking at things and climbing things you'll go to a restaurant alone and order the mussels it will feel good to pay with your own money you'll drink pepsi max in a bar and say your own silly version of the serenity prayer a man serving you will ask what you're reading. You will be glad he's never heard of the bell jar. You'll get a text telling you that you're a real piece of shit. You have some stuff you need to work through, Red, like how you interact with the people you care about. You imagine how lovable you'll be when all the hard work pays off and you finally become a good person. It will be the first night of a new decade and you won't feel like writing. You'll go to your hotel room and watch Finding Nemo with Dutch subtitles. You won't even mind the mild peril of it all. You'll want a drink, but you'll eat chocolate instead. God will grant you the serenity 
to turn these unbearable feelings into cold, hard cash. God, brilliant. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Thank you, mate. That was class. That was class. Thank you. Nice. Joy? Joyful? I, yeah, I'd say so. Finding Nemo in chocolate. That's <laughs> someone's version what? of joy. I thought, yeah, it was brilliant. It was, it was, it was honest. It was funny. It was, yeah, just, it was brilliant. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So have you got anything that you want to share? Like anything you want to point us to? Obviously you book, you've got your collection, um, but is there anything you want to shout about? Or I'm just, I'm, I'm working on the next one. So just don't think I've completely disappeared. Uh, that'd be nice. Anybody who's supported me in the past know that I'm still, uh, still writing away. Obviously, I talk a lot about recovery and, and being in hospital and that. So a lot of the time you get your life gets uh, interrupted in a lot of ways and, and not just your life, but also obviously career. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So there's been a few times yeah. where I've had to turn stuff down or I've, I've not I've not been on it as much. So I'm just really grateful that people have, have popped in and, and are, are still supporting because um, sometimes I've been uh, I've been I've fallen off the face of the earth. So it's nice to know I'm still around. Um, oh. And yeah, follow me on Twitter. I'm really funny on Twitter. I just, it's <laughs> private because I teach children. So I feel like it's wasted. If, you, if you've enjoyed anything, uh, Twitter's where it's at. But also Instagram, yeah. obviously. I don't want to, <laughs> all, what did you say earlier? Other social media platforms are also available. <laughs> yeah, TikTok, that's what we're all about, isn't it? Oh, You'd be really good at TikTok. Thank it's you. all lip syncing, isn't it? I do love a lip sync, but the issue is the children know about the TikTok. Uh, the children right, don't yeah. know about the Twitter. <laughs> uh, uh. So they're already looking for me. So I'd uh, I'd be caught out immediately. I well, never live it down. I never live it down. Never mind. Never thank mind. You well, so, thanks for inviting me, mate. I'm. Um, thank you. Honestly, you know, we I've, I've performed with you and and hung out with you loads of times. You're such a good egg and and. It's really great that people are putting stuff on. I'm so grateful for platforms because I'm a lazy bastard who doesn't do anything for other people. So, you know, we, we really appreciate people who are both, um, you know, entertainers and creators, but who also do platforms for other people. Like, I really do mean that. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. That means a lot. It's been great having you on. I think you're aced. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cool. And my love to Maria. Will do. Who I saw. I've got to go make tea now. Oven's eating up. <laughs> Preheating the oven is, but I still don't do that. And then I'm like, why is this pizza cold in the middle? Like, yeah, I know. Need to grow up. Need to grow up. I'm getting old. I'm in my thirties now. Anyways, you're a star. Thank you Thank very you, much. Mate. Thanks for having me. Cool. And a big love, and we'll speak soon. Speak soon. Bye. Bye, hon. Bye. Uh, that was Emily Harrison, who is absolutely fantastic. So check out her debut collection. I can't sleep because my bed is on fire, which is available through Burning Eye Books. Uh, next week, we're back with another Insta session from Sile Katebi, 7.30 to late UK time. And if you're about tomorrow night, I'm doing my uh, one-man spoken word show, Two Little Ducks, on Facebook Live from 8 till 9. So check that out as well. Uh, my name's Matt Abbott. We are Names and Thugs. Thank you for watching and have a good night. Cheers. Yeah.